Hello ladies and gentlemen, we're going to review patch 10.6. I haven't read them before, we're just going to have uh, some general impressions uh, and uh, that's it. Let's get to it. Hello children of the earth. Oh, we're not going to read this. Oh, wow, 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 wow. This is a massive patch. I've made myself the service to not read PBE changes because it's honestly driven me insane. Uh, but this is a massive patch. Skins, who cares? I hate the Dark Star line, honestly, because every spell looks the same. Like, like the Trash Lantern looks the same as the Karma Q and it spooks me out. This, this looks cute. Woo! Autofill balance and ranked. The solo duo Q matchmaking system will now be less likely to create games where teams do not have the same number of autofill players. Yes. Yes. I think there should be some kind of hidden MMR for every role. Like maybe like you have 100 MMR, MMR less, whatever, you know? But this is cool. This was very, very annoying. Very annoying. Look in general at the patch. I don't know, they seem to just try to push champions that uh, aren't being played much into play. Uh, and then um, Aphelio Senna are the ones that are... Like the nerfs are in regards to pro play. Darius Garan, I think, is just solo queue uh, after the buffs to, to jungle clear speed. Shaco gets nerfed, that's kind of odd. But I guess it's the same, he just uh, dominates solo queue uh, in lower ranks. Maybe in higher ranks too, honestly. And then adjustment Wukong. Uh, that's interesting. Wukong has been discussed for a long time and it, this was the champion that spawned the whole 200 years meme. So that's uh, that's cool. Let's jump into it. Anivia, our ice iteration increased. Uh, 2 seconds to 3 seconds, now the same as Q, Flash, Frost, ice duration. So Anivia is such a tricky one to, to buff because I think there's uh, many many one tricks that are having success with Anivia and she's in a weird spot that uh, um, you know, if she gets buffed too much, I think the, the one tricks will win too much. <laughs> I think this is a good quality of light change. Uh, I remember in the past when I played Anivia that I noticed that uh, I ran into this. So it gives consistency and I think probably for the one tricks it doesn't matter too much. Uh, like sure it helps that people are slowed for one more seconds. And... Um, in general, I think it's just a good quality of life change, the fact that the duration is as long as Q, you know? I don't think this is going to change Anivia's position at all in the game, especially in contrast to competitive. Aphelios. Aphelios continues to dominate pro play, we're pulling more power out of the mechanics pro players tend to value higher than players at other tiers. Okay, okay. Level 9 of DOE damage. Hmm... Well, this is a pretty chunky nerf because it's five percent less on level one and early levels. So this is this is a pretty chunky nerf, especially because something that's so OP about Felios is that in most lane matchups he can have prior from level one, two, three, four, and uh, that usually decides if you can base on BF or not. And then afterwards he scales so freaking well. Like Felios has only one weakness, and that's mobility, and that's a weakness for many AD carries. Uh, Felios uh, is uh, very very strong, very potent because he has very few weak lane matchups. Uh, this is decent, this is alright, and then this is okay. I still think FLS will be played a lot, especially by the players that played well, but this is pushing, you know, it feels like Riot misses the Zaya, Kaiza, Ezreal, Meta, and I think they are trying to find the world where everything kind of coexists together with Senna, Aphelios, and uh, kind of add them to the pool of interesting champions. But all these nerfs are doing in terms of pro play, what we need to pay attention to is the changes to, you know, Kaiser got buffed, Zyra Khan is still something that's super strong, Ezra got buffed and has been playing, being played super much, and all of these nerfs are going to affect those champions. Maybe we're going to see more Varus, more Caitlyn, the usual AD carries. Because this is the world we lived in uh, before uh, before this this year started. So Aphelios, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is not the last nerf, you know. But they're piling it on. 
Darius, W bonus damage decrease, cost increase, E cost increase, but now scales down with rank. Oh wow. It's a... Wow. Well, 10% bonus physical damage. Um, okay, this is a bit of damage nerf, okay. Mana. Honestly, the mana, it adds up. It adds up. Uh, this is this is a lot of mana, and, and and usually like like sure you can just put more emphasis on the sheen component. I think uh, buying black black cleaver, uh, whoever does it on Darius needs to be reported because Trinity Force is so OP on this champ. Um, honestly, this is this is pretty hefty, you know. Early levels is going to matter. Maybe after first base is going to matter, but then afterwards. Uh, you know, when you begin to get more components with Trinity Force, you're going to be out. Maybe people will consider uh, going Corrupting Potion start on Darius. That's something that you can consider. And then you can kind of uh, shy away from this if you have mana issues. Because most of the starts that people do on Darius is Doran's Blade because you have so high um, damage scaling numbers. And... Um, you just want to look for that all-in, and all-ins are better with Doran's Blade uh, over Corrupting Potion, while you want to have shorter trades with Corrupting Potion. But uh, this is hefty. This is hefty, uh, especially with a Bruiser Champion that doesn't have that big of a mana pool. First base, like first, like lane starts, that is the time where you, it's going to matter, and then uh, second uh, uh, base is going to matter too. The key thing, though, is I like this change because it's targeted towards noobs that are abusing it in lower ranks in mo most time like if i'm playing darius i'm not going to use e and miss it you know i'm going to use e only when i hit it and usually when i do that you know it's it's a commitment and it's already winning me the lane so uh, in some matchup is going to matter because you're going to use apprehend more often in some matchups less because you're going to use e uh, you know, less often, and that one E that you're going to do is going to win you the lane. Uh, if you miss E, then <laughs> you get severely punished now, so that matters. But it's a, it's a very... Uh, I, I like this way of nerfing Darius because I understand that on lower ranks, Darius is, is, is uh, very, very obnoxious. Draven. Oh, okay. 10% move speed, which is... Which is decent, but it's of course a decay move speed because uh, of the W. But uh, ten percent move speed is is decent. Like it's it's a it's a hefty chunk. It's 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 good amount of move speed. Um, Draven, I think, is already in a wonderful state. Uh, like last year when we were in Vitality, I convinced Attila to uh, pick up Draven and to learn Draven, and we got a lot of victories off of it. And Draven's only been buffed ever since. So I think. Draven is in a fantastic place, and all uh, Solo Cube users uh, uh, rejoice. They're very happy about this. Garen, base magic resist growth decreased, E crit strike ratio decreased. This is I'm a bit disappointed by, because I think Garen was one of those champions that could actually uh, be played in, in pro play. Uh, but uh, all this doesn't matter too much, and I think you can just deviate from the build. Basically, uh, you just uh, don't buy crit anymore and uh, you just go Black Cleaver, Trinity Force or something like this. So honestly, these changes or whatever. Uh, Garan will still uh, see pro play, I think. Hecarim. We're encouraging Hecarim to take more risk with max range engages. Fear duration. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, this is okay. I think uh, the problem with Hecarim is... Like, wanting to buy Trinity Force on the jungler is pretty awkward because... The item path to it is very wonky, and in a lot of pro games where you actually reach this item, Trinity Force, it's already too late unless you're giga fed. So I feel like Hecarim itemization in jungle is kind of awkward. Maybe this could be a potential buff to Hecarim, Hecarim top. Uh, maybe people can pick Hecarim into Aatrox or something like this. Who knows? I think um, it's, it's, it's an interesting buff though. Interesting buff. Kane, they really want us to play Kane. Considering we see more Zack and more uh, Gragas and more Sejuani, I think definitely with all of these Kane buffs, 10.5 Kane buff, 10.6 Kane buff, uh, Kane uh, will show up again because when Kane gets form, he is uh, definitely a menace.
So all of these buffs are going to add up and I think Kane is going to show more play. Oh, Kindred as well. They're really buffing AD junglers. Oh, wow. they really want people to play Mordecai as they're in the West. Kindred, base attack damage growth and mana region increase. W health. Uh, oh, this, this is a lot. This is a lot. Attack damage growth. 0.25. So it's uh, not that much AD, right? On max rank, max level. Mana region, whatever. Oh, that's that's pretty neat. That's 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 a lot of HP actually. That's a uh, that's a decent buff. Heal of lamps or spite. That's also pretty neat. But uh, I don't know how to view this as a buff or as not a buff because <laughs> enemies also <laughs> get value from this. But of course, you get a bit more value because you are ulting on your own terms, right? You're ulting when you want to ult, and uh, so any type of buff to to kind to the to the Kindred healing is going to be slightly weighted in Kindred's favor because she has the option of choosing when to use it. Yeah. Base movement speed increased, E shield increased early. Oh, wow. This is huge. Wow. Okay. This is very big. Wow, this is very, very big. The reason it's big is because, like, move speed on a champion like Morgana, like, a move speed on a ranged champion is huge because you can put yourself in better positions to, to land better cues, right? There is a finesse and a skill to positioning properly in order to, to land skill shots. People think it's like people think that skill shots is aim, but skill shots is positioning. Uh, most of the time, you know, it's both aim of course matters like if you have stupid aim, but perfect positioning You're not going to land. Of course it matters. Don't get me wrong But positioning matters. I think slightly more than than aim Because aim is easier to master uh, Positioning a uh, positioning in a way where you uh, Threaten enemies from specific angles you will increase your odds of hitting because they will have less space to to dodge so five move speed is, is huge and also 20 shield is also huge because this this puts you out of some specific breakpoints, right? 80 shield and then count Morgana AP as well. You can go double AP uh, runes and then uh, you can uh, you also, of course, buy your support item. You get AP. So this puts you in breakpoints where, for example, Nautilus Q won't break it, right? Nautilus Q won't break it. Nautilus Q got some nerfs. Nautilus Q won't break it, and then he can't auto right after the Black Shield. Same way with, for example, a Braum. He could break it with Q. Uh, that's why we didn't see Morgana that many times in the meta. Morgana, uh, these are great Morgana buffs, and uh, especially, you know, with the current AD carry pool, I think Morgana's going to see a lot more play with this buff. This is this is massive to me, man. This is this is, this is an, an insane. Rise. Rise! Mana region growth. Okay. This is neat, but this is pretty useless. Like, this is giga useless. Uh, like, sure, cool. Like, when you're, <laughs> when you're level 18, it makes a bit of a difference, but usually, like, you max W less, so, so who cares? Uh, this is this is fine, I guess. I don't think this changes rise at all. Maybe we, yeah. Passive AD per soul decrease, miss cooldown now scales. Oh, okay. That is a pretty hefty nerf as well. Uh, you can actually have a weak matchup into Senna now without uh, giving her 2,000 souls. So this is this is a okay nerf, but I think this still Senna will see play. I think this is a this is a decent nerf. Maybe she won't be first pick uh, prio same way as a Felios. I think uh, both ways uh, both both changes are in the right direction. Like I'm happy that they are gradually nerfing Senna and Felios instead of gutting them completely, shoving them out of the meta. I am liking the approach to patches that Riot has this year. It's been very, very good, in my opinion. So, nice. Shaco. 
hallucinate clone basic attack damage so ap shaco is still very strong ap shaco is still very very strong i see ap shaco more frequently than ad shaco but that could be completely anecdotal uh okay i'm assuming this has to be win ratio based uh, i'm assume i'm gonna trust riot on this one soraka Q rejuvenation, heal increase, movement speed bonus increase. Putting power back in Starker now that the scourge of Soraka Top is no longer threatening time and space, we know it. This is this sentence reads weird. Honestly, Soraka was doing fine uh, top lane. She had she was still seeing some play and uh, in solo queue, and I still think she fits a very niche role. And this is once again, I think. Riot uh, did a good job of the nerf. They didn't remove it because I think they should encourage as many diverse playstyles as possible. And uh, Soraka Top was definitely one of them. Okay, Twisted Fate. Now there's a little more reason to stack your deck differently come late game. Well, people are very excited about these changes, but I am not as excited. Because if you blue card, like sure there are scenarios where you can blue card and AP scaling on it is, is, is decent. But keep in mind it's a single target spell, right? It's a single target spell and very rarely at a later parts in the game are you going to want to blue card then over yellow carding. So I feel like this is a buff to shitty Twisted Fates that uh, accidentally take the wrong card and now they say I just wanted to burst. <laughs> uh, like it's it's a, it's a decent change it's a decent change it is a big chunk of ap scaling on the w this is this is for sure a, a buff of 0 0.4 ability power scaling and 0 0.1 on an a aoe ability it is a decent amount of scaling but it just doesn't make TF more powerful, probably at lower ranks when people screw up their card choices. I just... The scenarios where you want to blue card over, over gold cards is just very rare. When you're actually hitting someone, you know? Uh, the way you could view it as well is TF is going to be better at killing Nash, sure. Sure, better at killing Nash, that's cool. Um, and that's it. But it's a decent buff, you know, it's okay. But I don't think it's going to do anything amazing for uh, for TF. Like, wave clear-wise, I never felt I had an issue when I played TF. When I played TF, I don't feel I have an issue wave clear-wise, but at the time where uh, I will actually, you know... Like, Q, Q is already great wave clear. I never felt like I had an issue with, with wave clear for Twisted Fate. So, AoE card, okay. Uh, okay buff, fine. Killing turrets, killing Nash, blue card, cheers. You know, that's 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 all. But I think, uh, yeah, most of the time you're just going to gold card enemies. This can be cool for Nash and, and turrets. Okay. Urgot. With Purge being go-to ability max first, okay, slow duration 125. Okay, okay. E, disdain, one second. Whip a buff, whip a buff. Cool. Whip a buff. I wonder if this 0 0.25, so I don't have enough knowledge on, on the current state of Urgot, and I'm going to just speculate here. And if there is an Urgot one trick out there that would li like to speak on this, then uh, you, you, you can raise your voice. But E into, maybe you can do like E into QR now, and you have the timing window to do so with the stun of uh, you tossing people. So you had to E into R, and then now maybe you can E into QR, which uh, which serves a purpose, right? It, it improves your combo, and maybe you will actually get more kills through this. Also, this feels good because... When you are fighting people that had tenacity, maybe you couldn't E into R. So we'll see. We'll see. 
Vega, base AD, AD growth and armor increased, Q base damage increased, small buffs for the small boy. Okay, this, uh, okay, this doesn't matter too much. This is minor, 10 base damage, cool. Yeah, yeah. all right, it's fine. I think Vega is in, in a fine state. He, he serves a purpose in the game and I think this is this is cool. Like I don't think this is going to like when I say cool, I'm like okay, you know, whatever. It's not gonna change uh, the game. Wukong, 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 Wukong. Whoa, Wukong. Okay. Magic resistance less, base health less, mana higher, mana growth. Updated to reflect the strength of bruiser-oriented builds on Wukong. Armor. Removed. So you always get armor. 5 to 11. That's buffed. You are better into AD champion. Because you nerfed MR, nerfed MR. So they are trying to really, really make sure that Wukong doesn't go mid lane. They don't want Wukong to go mid lane. Right now they are saying, yeah, we don't want Wukong in mid lane. Caps, don't play at mid lane. They are removing any magic resistance. Basically, like, Wukong stats are weighed towards fighting physical damage carries, right? Because of this armor. Wukong no longer gains bonus. Okay. Now grants 0 from 5 maximum health regen per 5 seconds. Wow. 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 Bonuses are increased by 6.25% for 5 seconds every time Wukong or his decoy hit an enemy champion or monster stacking up to 8 times for a total bonus of 500 How can you hit with decoy 8 times? Eight minions? Crushing blow. Bonus basic attack damage. 30, 55. So that's a 20, 15. And then it ends at the same. Total attack damage. Bonus attack damage. Nerf. Okay. Range. In general, bit nerf. Are people maxing E still? Cast time now scales with Wukong's attack speed. Good quality of life change. Whenever Wukong or his decoy deal damage with basic attacks... What? His decoy deal damage with basic attacks? Yo. Decoy. Added the 300 range dash that can't go over walls. Wow. That's huge. Wow, that's, that's huge. Step duration. One second. Okay, who cares? You have a 300 range dash. So you're going to, you needed to have 600 move speed to to compensate for this 300 range. So this this you don't care about. This is this is buff. Wukong's decoy no longer deals AOE magic damage before disappearing. Cooldown, but cooldown went down from crushing blow. Decoy CDR. Sixty mana. Wukong's decoy now mimics his attacks and ultimate. What? Ultimate? I can CC whole enemy team or what?
What? The decoy will attempt to attack enemies Wukong has recently attacked. The decoy's next attack is empowered. The decoy gains bonus attack speed. The decoy will start spinning and knock up enemies that haven't been knocked up already from the initial ultimate cast. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so unbalanced. What? The Let's read E and Cyclone before we jump to conclusions. Ah. Okay. So this is Big Nerf. This is Big Nerf. Why? <laughs> Why do we give him AP scaling? <laughs> what? Why do we give it AP scaling? Why? Okay. Tax speed buff duration, cooldown. Wow, distance to target post dash. So you just max Q first, it looks like. Or maybe even W. Wukong can now cast his ultimate a second time within 8 seconds. What? What? Tot <gasps> What? They even both this Maximum health damage and the total attack damage remains the same. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? And you spin fast right away. You spin fast right away. Yeah, spin duration. Okay. But it totals the, the same amount of time. And you can spin on command. You can E, Q, W, spin, and then you spin again. Oh my goodness. Because you can, you can use two combos, two spins. Yeah. You even cancel faster the spin. And you get the more speed. This was so freaking annoying. So freaking annoying. So freaking annoying when you played Wukong this. The move speed and people jogged away from you or the cancellation. Damage tick rate. Oh, this is also cool. Each tick of damage now applies Conqueror. You, you get... Every time you hit, you get Conqueror? And then the decoy is also spinning and knocking shit up. What? Keep on spinning. Wukong's bonus attack speed duration from E Nimble Strike is refreshed while spinning. Holy quality of life, man. Many quality of life changes. Very nice.
Like some of these changes, I'm very happy that they're happening. You know, this is wonderful. This feels really good. 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 But this... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what is this? Wow. This shit right here, man. 70% damage. 70% damage. Q max into W max, max E last, and free win. Jesus Chrysler. Wow. Maximum health damage and the total attack damage scaling stays. Do you get lifesteal from this? Like, like let's say you have, let's say you have Death Dance, okay? Death Dance, do you heal from your clone healing? Do... Can you go like Blade of the Ring King and just... Can we Blade of the Ring King? Oh, man. Oh... Oh my goodness. Well, this looks super OP. This looks super OP. Like, I've been laughing and all, but on paper, this looks really OP. Really, really OP. Like, even this. Like, I'm laughing so hard at this and this and this that I forgot completely about this. And this. Bonuses are increased by 6.20 for 5 seconds every time Wukong or his... Every time Wukong! What? Even Wukong! Even Wukong can hit! I thought only decoy! Oh! What? You heal so much! The fuck? What? You heal so much! Oh! Oh man! Oh! Okay. Well, guys, my assessment is that uh, Wukong is uh, pretty OP. <laughs> Holy moly. Eye of Destruction, Zerath. Who fucking cares? What did I press now? Ah! Uh. Nemesis buff. Woo! Jungle Champions. Jungle Champions. Yo, don't give Morgana more buffs, man. What the hell, man? Morgana's so... She got so big buffs already. She got so big buffs already. So big buffs. So big buffs, man. Okay, this I'm not a believer in. This I'm a believer in because Morgana has a place in the meta. So this is pretty powerful. This I'm not a believer in. Uh, I'm not a believer in Shen. Uh, Timo, honestly, 1v1 Timo power is pretty nuts. I've seen some one-trick Timo jungle do some nasty things with this champion. And this is pretty cool. Uh, Timo mains rejoice. And also for top lane, like you're playing Timo top, 
or Shen Top, you're very happy that you can kill jungle better. Can they put something in place to make sure that these buffs don't affect lane? Like, don't ban Morgana. Like, don't don't buff Morgana further. Like, Morgana is already in a fantastic state after the previous buffs. Banning Morgana further puts her really, really high on the prior list. And then maybe you can jungle her. You can take Raptors with her when you're playing Morgana mid lane. Very easy. This is getting is gonna get so abused, so so abused. All of these changes get so giga abused. What on earth, man? Like, why? 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 At least, like, there was someone on Reddit. I don't remember who. Just make them forced to have smite to have this. Someone on Reddit said this. Good change. If you have smite, increase your damage. Okay. God bless. But these are buffs of a lane. Even, even brand. Sometimes I play brand support. I'm very happy. I'm taking golems. Chilling. This is going to improve my lane. Yorick jungle? Low-key, juicy. Low-key, juicy, because you can have the little maiden. She's running after you, and your clear speed is crazy good. Crazy good. And your 1v1 power is also really, really strong, because you're running around with, with maxed out ghouls. You're not uh, putting yourself in danger, because your, your, your lady, your maiden is out. So your jungle is interesting. I might play it on stream one day just to show it, because I think it's, it's, it's intriguing. It's very intriguing. So this is this is a welcome buff, at least for me. But this is like probably we won't see Morgana jungle, but Morgana mid lane. <laughs> Jeez, Morgana mid lane. And Montrix are very happy about this. This I don't care about, honestly. This uh whatever. Funnel mechanics. Put it in the grave, baby. Put it in the grave. 13 less gold and 50% less experience from lane minions. If more than half of your farm is from minions removed at 14 minutes so i think if people play funnel they're gonna let Tarek take all the farm and then you just take the xp with master yo-yo cool uh that would be the next adaptation for uh funnel just uh, don't take the farm cool top lane significance follow-up we're following up with the top lane changes blah blah blah, blah, blah. coffee warmer aegis of legion vampire except 500g 50 attack damage, so 30 AD for 30 armor and 30 magic resistance. Hmm. I could. It's pretty goddamn strong because it's a pretty rushable item now, you know? It's a pretty rushable item, and finding 30 MR and 30 MR, I mean 30 armor and 30 MR in an item early on is, is very, very good. Uh, get, getting to use the, the post-mitigation damage effect early on in the game is going to be very impactful. And then, at the same time, there is a sense of synergy, right? There's a sense of synergy, 30 armor, 30 MR, uh, with lifesteal, there is a synergy there because you make your lifesteal more effective, right? Because Vampiric Scepter and, and lifesteal in general is going to give you health. I, I just really like the accessibility here because consider, like the, the most OP about this is look at the component components that you are buying in order to build this dance. They are all very small, they're all very cheap, and they're all also good items for lane. Vampiric Scepter, good item for lane for a lot of champions. Aegis, you buy a Cloth Armor, you buy a Null Magic Mantle sometimes, so depending on what you're laning against. You have a shitty base, you get a couple of daggers. Very, very nice. A lot of champions are very happy with this change because they can actually rush this item as first item. And that is the biggest difference maker here. It was very, very difficult to buy something like a pickaxe. You come to lane with a pickaxe, you're like... You are basically asking to get, for, for a lack of a better term, you're asking to get fucked in a lot of matchups. And uh, 
now you buy all these smaller components and you actually reach death dance and it's going to be a huge huge power spike because the item itself synergizes across the board and it's super cool that they are buffing all the vampire acceptor items because with the changes to tanks and changes to sunfire cape uh, it definitely put bruisers in an awkward position and now they are looking super super strong because this item it also looks very powerful next to Titanic Hydra, Ravenous Hydra, and also Blade of Ruin King. Uh, also, the key thing here, the key difference is that this is a massive buff for some of the ranged top laners too. This is something that you can see on a Graves. This is going to put Graves lane on the map even further. This is going to put Graves. Uh, Jace can potentially buy this too and have uh, you know a lot of joy with some of the effects because maybe Jace you wouldn't want to buy of course any of the Hydra items uh, Just the fact that the item path is so freaking nice. It's super super good Next thing in line is uh, TP Wow Yeah, this change on honestly. I already know about it uh, Grand three seconds of move speed. That's what I just wowed at because this is what I didn't know uh, Grand three seconds this this is very very nice uh, honestly, makes TP pretty OP. Uh, this is scaling with level. The key thing here, if you if you get screwed level one or you get ganked very early on, uh, this is going to be rough for you. Like if you get level two ganked now as a top laner, you are kind of screwed. If you're fanatic, you look at this change and you're also less happy because that's the team that would do the TP plays most out of all. But in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, the gap, the gap where the old TP. So let's just uh, let's just go to wiki here. Let's go to wiki. Teleport. Let's just make sure that the numbers are right. Because I want to see what level, what level is it as strong as before. So, Cosmic Insight. And then, uh, base cooldown. Well, can we, can, do we have a list here or something? Give me a list, give me a list. Give me a list of, okay, there it is. So, already at level 7, TP has its original strength and then scaling. So in the context of this, it is nerfed to the classic Fnatic TP. Okay? It is a nerf to Fnatic TP. Fnatic TP is the one where you TP with a gangplank onto mid lane level 3 and you get a double kill. Uh, this, this is a nerf. It's a nerf to that play, where you TP early on. It is a nerf, well, a buff and a nerf in the fact that if you get level 2 ganked and you're forced to TP and the enemy top laner can keep his TP, you're going to also be in big trouble for a very big chunk of time. Okay? So it's buff to level 2 gank top, uh, nerf to fanatic uh, TP. It's also nerf to bot lane TP. Obviously, it's a nerf to bot lane TP because, uh, in general... You're going to, uh, you know, uh, get levels later on in the game. You you get level seven later on in the game, so it balances out later on in the game. But the question is, if TP is just too OP in this alteration, just way too OP to not have later on in the game because the cooldown is so much significantly lower. You know, it is so much lower than what it used to be. This is two minutes, two minutes less at level 18, right? So it's a, it's, it's, it's a decent change, right? It's, it allows you, it's a big buff to split pushers, right? It's a big buff to split pushers, which is a lot of the top laners, some of the mid laners too. Uh, in general, this is also buff to mid lane, uh, but TP is definitely weaker early on. Uh, if you are laning against something in top where the enemy has ignite, he has a bigger window to actually make use of it, right? Let's say you're playing against ignite top. Uh, he has an, a, 
a pretty decent advantage for for like eight minutes, nine minutes of the game before you reach level seven and your TP begins to to scale a bit, right? So if he uses his ignite to force you, like let's say you play ignite top, yeah, and he forces you to TP back with his ignite. There, he has a big advantage already, right? He all you, all ends you level two. He forces you to TP back. You're low HP. You have to TP back. You want to use your summoner to to do something. This is going to put you in a very awkward spot because the enemy is going to ignite you two times before you get your TP back. So this is also key. So the move speed is nice, right? It gives you uh, some opportunities to make plays. You have a little Nimbus Cloak effect in it. But uh, all in all, we'll have to see how it impacts the meta. I think... Uh, Late game TP looks really, really OP. Early game, it might be a, a bigger liability, which is a good thing. I think TP nullified a lot of aggressive plays in a lot of situations. Uh, and uh, I think this is going to put you in a position where it becomes more heavily punished and early game impact is going to matter more. Uh, this is very, very juicy for junglers that can actually level 2 gank and maybe we will see something like Camille and whatever come back just to, to counter these TPs and to put a dent in them early on, you know? But maybe, maybe Ignite top, you know, we saw Ignite Lucian top, which is pretty troll. If you manage to use your Ignite to burn a TP and you have two Ignites before he TPs back, that's a big deal in my eyes. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe there is room to experiment with other summoners, especially if you're playing a champion that... Uh, you know, it's not going to win split. Like, let's say you're playing a top laner and your mid laner is running TP. Maybe it's enough to play one TP in a team. Let's say you're playing Rumble top. You're playing Rumble top and you have Ignite. That could be pretty cool, you know, because you're not going to win split later. And then your mid laner is going to match TP. And early on, you're going to have such a big advantage. You know, there's room to experiment with different... Uh, different... Um, different summoner spells but tp definitely scales here and if you are split pushing tp is going to be very very powerful uh if you are winning the lane and there is no longer that six minute window let's say uh there was a game uh, between fanatic and g2 where set used tp to defend reckless two times and there's a six minute window where he can't abuse the fact that he's stronger and split because most of the time he needs to group anyway so I think uh, this is a very, very interesting change. I'll have to wait and see how it develops. But pay attention to some of the problems and some of the things that you can do in order to use this to your advantage and also your disadvantage, you know? Especially if you're a jungler, you're a top laner, you're a mid laner, you're AD carry, whatever. Think about the things that I mentioned. Recommended items, who cares? NALCS changes, Kaiser, ah. Navigation icons, eh. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Eternals, yes. Eternal Mice progress made in game should now be accurately reflected in the client. Yes! Eternal Milestone display settings should now persist between client sessions. Yes! Eternals! Whoa! This looks sick, man. This, this, this looks sick, man. Really sick. Very sick. Okay. Okay, that's it for my rundown. If I highlight my key things, my key takeaways, uh, honestly, Wukong, <laughs> Wukong is mental. Morgana is really, really good now. Morgana is fantastic. Timo might be viable as jungle because you have very good 1v1 fighting. Same for Yorick. 1v1 fighting is very strong. Uh, this is okay-ish, you know. Uh, a lot of small changes that are nudging, like 1% win ratio, 2% win ratio. I like the general approach to uh, to the game that Riot is taking, uh, which is cool. But uh, all in all, you know, it's a decent patch. It's a decent patch. Decent patch. I'm I'm I'm, I'm hoping I'm wrong about Wukong. I'm hoping I'm wrong about Wukong. This looks wonderful. Uh, this is cool. We need some AD jungles in the game. This is cool. We need some AD jungles in the game. This is cool. We need some AD jungles in the game. This is whatever I think. Uh, Blood Rush. Okay, 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 okay. So all in all, fun patch. Wukong might 
achieve permaban status uh, and that's it thank you